Now I would like to call on stage Alessio Candi for a Pan Bianco presentation. Grazie David, buongiorno. Thank you David, good morning everybody. Come sempre abbiamo As usual, we have uh, some slides to show you. So it is a recap of the global figures of the sector and we are also underlining the main trends that um, are currently ongoing. So let's have a look at the market. These are global data that are aligned with those mentioned by Mr. Lavino. Of course, his numbers are focused on Italy. Um, and here we see that the lip lipstick effect did not work for the first time. We've always known that um, beauty has always been um, resilient and very elastic uh, in the face of the crisis. This didn't happen during the pandemic because from 220 billions uh, of 2019, there was a decrease by 8% in 2020. The good news, however, is that in 2021, they uh, bounced back and reached the same level as pre-crisis. Uh, looking at geographies, uh, it is quite balanced, so looking at um, the Americas, Europe, um, Asia, rest of the world, the, the numbers are more or less aligned. Asia is still the most important country, especially Northern Asia accounts for 35% of the market. Looking at categories of products, uh, there's, there has been a general growth. In 2020, we had a deep growth of all categories, and now we are seeing a rebound, um, stronger rebound, uh, such as for fragrances, for the products that suffered more during the pandemic. But um, overall, I would say it is an upward trend. An important uh, data regards skincare. Skincare accounts for 40, 41% of the overall market. So, a market focused on skincare and Asia. It is also a very concentrated market. These are the eight most important players. Um, which had a seven, 78 billion euros turnover. If we look at the progression between 2019 and 2021, of course, um, everyone struggled in 2020, but they keep the marginalities um, in a good shape. There is a rebound in 2021. Um, there is a good result in terms of EBITDA. All those players are above the levels of 2019. All of them but Shiseido, Coty and Douglas. Another topic which was already mentioned by Mr. Lavino is um, e-commerce. So e-commerce is still going strong. It um, had a strong acceleration during the pandemic because it was the only channel that was always uh, available even during lockdown. So we see the progression it was 90 billion in 2014 and we reached 51 billion in 2021. So a growth by 16%, and it accounts for 20% of the overall market, both direct and indirect. Of course, we are the stock exchange, so uh, we should look at the um, listed companies. We have 18 companies listed uh, worldwide. They have a market capital of around 4,400 uh, million. They fare quite well in 2021 because they gained 17%. But in the first four months of 2022, probably because of the uh, geopolitical situation, there was a decrease. 
Quali sono i trend principali che stiamo vedendo? What are the main trends we are seeing every day? We chose four trends that are particularly relevant uh, to us. The first one is the um, increase of number of beauty brands by influencers and celebrities. Many influencers and celebrities launch their own brand, and this is not only female-oriented brand. We see that um, the market is quite concentrated, but we still see mergers and acquisition. The new topic for this sector is uh, omnichannel. So they used to be sold in very um, well-defined markets, but here the lines are blurring. And the strongest topic, which was already mentioned, is sustainability. Looking at beauty brands from influencers and celebrities, uh, in the past four to five years, there has been a great increase in this phenomenon. So we have celebrities, uh, actors, um, movie stars, uh, singers, and especially uh, from Instagram and TikTok. Some of them are Italian, that's very interesting, and some of them, such as Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian or Rihanna, have been acquired by Kuti or MBH. So uh, big groups are also interested in this phenomenon. We are now looking at some um, case history um, for Italy, so, such as Cristina Fogazzi with Verilab, Michelle Hunziker with Guvi, and Clio Zamata with Clio Makeup. So the turnover become quite relevant and are always growing. We have data up to 2020, but 2021 um, had um, very good performance in terms of growth. As um, I was mentioning, uh, it's not only women who did that. We have cases such as uh, Pharrell Williams, Harry Styles, and Machine Gun Kelly, three influencers, singers, who launched um, cosmetic brands for nails and skin care. If we look at M&A, uh, we have eight main players, of course, but the rest of the market is still very much fragmented, and um, it, all, it is also very bubbly. Um, we see the main operations in the past year, uh, so 2021, 2022, um, there are quite sizable operations, such as Estelotter, Estelotter buying the ordinary for one billion, Nestlé, who bought, uh, which bought the Bountiful Company for um, six billion, and then we have uh, Eurasia, which bought Gizu very recently. Um, this is the same for Italy. We just um, here underline some of the main operations carried out in 2021-2022 for retails. So the fund HIG um, entered in Acqua e Sapone, Portobello Capital, uh, joined Farmall. And also the word of supplements is very interesting. Specchiasol acquired Fitogarda, and it is building this very strong group. And Palladio invested in Bios Line. Altro tema che secondo noi è importante. So another trend we would like to focus on, uh, which is quite new for the beauty world, is the omnichannel. Historically, the channels of sales for this uh, sector were very uh, well defined, such as pharmacies, drugstores, etc. This has been changing for the past years. And the revolution started from the e-commerce. What happened there? The e-commerce put 
in touch the brands with the consumers. So this really changed um, the um, situation for the very traditional sectors. So there is uh, a bit of a mix uh, between direct and indirect channels and uh, a very strong mix-up. Looking at omnichannel from physical to digital, we have Douglas, which is a historic uh, brick and mortar chain of um, perfumes and uh, makeup. Now, uh, around 38% of Douglas sales come from um, the online. Douglas also bought Disapo, an e commerce um, drugstore, Pharmae which is also listed on the Italian Stock Exchange, launched Beauty Air for the world of cosmetics. And we also see that other players are trying to um, start in the sector. In Farfetch, you find over 100 brands of beauty, and they will uh, sell exclusively online the off-white uh, perfumes, Luisa Via Roma, a historical fashion platform is starting to sell beauty and a West Wing, which is also moving from design to cosmetics. So the future is omnichannel. So we have brand and consumers. The consumer will have several touch points of contact um, to interact with the brand. And this may be the website, uh, brick and mortar stores, social media, which is constantly evolving, other e-commerce, uh, multi-market websites. And all these touch points need to be aligned and consistent. Um, then we go back to sustainability. Uh, a lot has been said about this for every sector. This is becoming increasingly important for beauty, though for all product categories and for all market uh, brackets. Here we have an example, which is Chanel. Chanel is, of course, a historic brand with an um, incredible heritage. In 2018, they um, joined the capital of Sulapak, a Finnish startup which was leading in innovation for sustainable packaging. They used this investment to launch the uh, Chanel number one line with a sustainable packaging and with um, natural formulas. So they replaced also the whole packaging of the number five uh, range, so iconic, with a sustainable packaging. Um, this is a great example because seeing that Chanel is going towards this direction means this is so incredibly important for final consumers. Other examples of sustainability we are seeing so are refillable, so the so-called refill revolution. This has been implemented by um, L'Occitane, Fenty Beauty, Glossier and Rougie Plus and waterless products. So. Um, the focus on reducing the package, um, water consumption in terms of packaging or in terms of um, shippings. This was implemented by uh, Chanel, Lush and Charlotte Tilbury. Further trends that we see that are ongoing. Um, this is something you probably see every day, inflation. So there is an increase in the cost of raw material and uh, there is also a shortage of raw materials and this is something we are witnessing at a company level but I think this in a few months this is going to be perceived in the prices of the products um, then we have this explosion of supplements so all supplement companies are really experiencing very positive trends. There are strong concentrations um, in the market 
because beauty doesn't come only from the outside but comes from within so from the inside and then um, we mentioned digital we mentioned social media uh, so new frontiers will be virtual so even in the world of beauty uh, companies are approaching the world of mm, metaverse nft and gaming so what's next so for 2022, what are our expectations? In spite of the war and the effects of the pandemic, which we don't know whether it is over yet or not, we um, estimate uh, a modest growth by 3-4%, which should uh, allow us to return in 2022 to the levels of 2019. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice day. <coughs>